Now, what is the need? Here is the requirement is to conduct a thorough and a sufficient risk assessment for scaffolding activities. Safety officers should follow these practical steps. As I told you, the number one step is to identify hazards. You need to conduct a site survey, site safety inspection to identify potential hazards related to scaffolding. Those I already highlighted in the previous part of the video. Secondly, you need to consult with workers to gather insights on specific risks they face at work. And thirdly, review past incident reports to understand common site hazards. These are three key points. Through site inspections and surveys. Secondly, through consultation with workers and supervisors. And thirdly, by reviewing past incident reports and accident data. The second step for practical and effective risk assessment. To evaluate risks. What to do? How to evaluate? Assess the likelihood of each identified hazard occurring. Determine the potential severity of the consequences if an incident occur. Use of the risk equation. Risk equals to likelihood multiplied by consequences to prioritize hazards. For example, there is a hazard fall of materials. If a material falls from the fifth story of a scaffold and even it's a nail, do you think it's a minor thing? No, not at all. A nail may also cause a potential injury and harm, a major accident. So, for each hazard, you need to segregate the hazards. And for each hazard, you will evaluate the risk. Maybe injury, maybe death, maybe fracture, maybe eye loss, maybe hearing damage, maybe unconsciousness, or maybe structural collapse and damage to other buildings. So once you will make a list of hazards and you will evaluate the risk, you need to understand every hazard is important for you. Then only you can categorize. The severity is high, medium or low. It is moderate or it is severe. After the identification of hazards, after the evaluation of risk, high, medium, low. Third step of effective risk assessment to implement control measures. How to implement control measures? Simply, control measures mean how you can stop these incidents, how you can minimize the impact of these incidents, how you can reduce the severity of the incident, how you can reduce the likelihood of the incident, how you can keep the risk to an acceptable level. What was the potential risk or hazard fall from height? So, when you are implementing control measures, the number one step you will take is use of fall protection. Ensure workers use harnesses and secure them properly. Number two, install guardrails. Equip scaffolding with guardrails to prevent falls. Number three, regular safety training. Conduct training sessions on safe scaffolding practices. Fourth control measure is supervision. Ensure that competent and qualified, experienced and skilled supervisors oversee scaffolding activities. Number five, scaffold stability checks. Regularly inspect scaffolding for stability and secure connections. Number six, weight management. Avoid overloading scaffolding by adhering to load limits. Number seven, safe distance from overhead power lines. Maintain a safe distance 
from electrical hazards in the third step you was implementing controls what you have done provided fall protection you installed guard rails to prevent falls you conduct regular training to raise the awareness about the scaffolding dangers and how to ensure scaffolding safety you have make sure continuous supervision stability checks weight management and a safe distance from power lines so you included all these points in your risk assessment fourth step is monitor and review as a safety practitioner you need to continuously monitor scaffolding activities to ensure compliance with safety measures you need to conduct regular inspections and audits of scaffolding structures and you need to review and update risk assessments periodically or when changes in the work environment occur this was the fourth step of practical and effective risk management number 5 you should always be ready for emergency situations and you need to be prepared for emergencies how is it possible by developing an emergency response plan for scaffolding incidents or accidents and secondly train workers on emergency procedures and first aid in the case if there is an incident how to deal how to handle critical situations when your mind and body is not working 100% you are panic if you are making drills and you are prepared for emergencies you can minimize the losses if there is a potential workplace incident occurs dear friends and fellows this training session was much important for all health and safety practitioners i'm telling them how the emergency situations can occur how they can assess the risk how they can identify the hazards how they can implement the controls how they can handle emergency situations calmly confidently and professionally by systematically identifying hazards evaluating risks and implementing control measures safety officers can significantly reduce the risks associated with scaffolding activities this proactive approach begins with a thorough risk assessment to identify potential dangers such as falls collapses and contact with overhead electrical power lines once hazards are identified evaluating the likelihood and severity of each risk allows for the development of targeted strategies to mitigate each risk implementing control measures like proper training use of safety harnesses installing guardrails and ensuring regular inspections of scaffolding structures scaffolding equipment scaffolding components creates a safer working environment dear health and safety practitioners Remember this diligent and systematic approach not only ensures compliance with safety regulations but also fosters a culture of safety and vigilance on construction sites by prioritizing worker safety and well-being companies can prevent accidents reduce downtime and avoid costly legal issues furthermore a strong safety record enhances the company's reputation contributing to long term success and sustainability ultimately the role of safety officers in managing scaffolding risks is crucial as their efforts protect the lives of workers and ensure that construction projects are completed safely and efficiently in time many times i said your role is key role you are important even not a single person in a project they are willing to accept you but still you are existing there it means without you without a health and safety practitioner project is never complete 
you are the integral part of the project so make yourself unique bold competent professional ethical and morally strong you can do what you need to do and i'm telling you what you need to do for now that's all if you have any question please ask in the comment section thanks for watching and don't forget to like comment and share the video hope to see you soon with a new hsc tutorial until then take care good luck and goodbye